in Galatians 3 from verse 26. For you are all sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as we are baptized into Christ have put on have put on what? You are not reading that. It's not me that wrote this thing. You have put on what? Next verse. Then there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. Uh -huh. If you are Christ. It didn't say if you are Peter. If you are John. If you are Christ. Then you are the seed of Abraham. And the heir according to promise. Now look at the painful thing now, which Paul said. This is Paul that said it. He, he was talking to the Galatians. In Galatians 3 from verse 29. Then in Galatians 4 from verse 19, he's telling them now. He said, I am laboring my little children, whom I labor in birth again. The first thing you want, there are two things that happen to you, two realms you go through when you become a Christian. Number one realm is that you become a born again. Number two is that Christ be formed in you. Now, you, they will be looking at you, your experience, your, your demonstration, your manifestation will be like the Christ. The same way Jesus was doing everything on earth, that he could never be sick, a born again can be sick. A born again can fail. A born again can be disappointed. But the one that Christ has been formed in them can never be sick. So that's why there are two kinds of Christians. There are the Christians that never fall sick. They are born again. But there are Christians there are Christians that fall sick. They are born again. There are Christians that never fall sick. They have, they have formed Christ. They have become Christ. Christ has been formed in them. So every experience Christ was experiencing is what they experience. They now know who they are. Their consciousness have increased. <laughs> Open your eyes and see. Don't remain in the realm of I am born again. I am a new creation. There is another dimension called Christ be formed in you. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Hmm. When you, when you learn this, when, you, when somebody asks, eh, I'm looking for Jesus. I am Jesus. It's not. You are Jesus Christ. You, you, you. Looking at me like this. You are Jesus. And whether you believe it or not, it's true. It's either Jesus is awake inside of you or is still sleeping in your skull. Still dead there. Although he died for many, but he's still dead in the life of many. Let's go to Matthew 16. Who do men say I am? Matthew 16 from verse 16. Who do men say I am? That I, let's start from verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say I am? That means, people, I'm asking you, who do men say you are? This question is not for Peter. <laughs> it's not for the disciples. It's for you. One day, your eyes will be open. One day, it will resurrect out of you. And you will know that you are the Christ. Going through another human experience. Who do men say I am? So they said, some say you are John. The way you will answer, who are you? I am David. I am Paul. I am James. Some said John the Baptist. Some said Elijah. Others said Jeremiah. Some say one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? That's why if they, if they, you, if they ask you, what is your name? The first thing you say is, I am, I am, 
I am. And he said, I am that I am is his name for a memorial. That is what he told Moses. When Moses said, who will I tell them send me? He said, tell them, I am that I am sent you. That is my name forever. So that's why anytime they ask you, who are you? You said, I am David. I am James. I am John. He will always ask you, who do men say you are? Some of you will say, I am Judas Iscariot. I am Elin. That is why the enemy can still handle you like a prayer. Elin is the name that they gave to you to camouflage, but that's not who you are. When John was baptizing, he said, He that sent me told me that whomsoever the Spirit rests upon during my baptism is the one. So you might look at John and you call him John the Baptist. No. Baptism is the common flag that he should be doing to identify the Christ. So you might come. He did not know the Christ. He did not know him. Not that he, he, he know that he's your cousin. No. So every day he was baptizing. He baptized you. And he said, no, you are not the one. He baptized your grand-grandfather. He said, no. Until the day Jesus came, immediately he baptized him. The Holy Ghost rested on him. So baptism was a common flag to identify the Christ. Your name is a common flag. One day, if you read the book of John, you say there was a man sent from God. Sent from God. His name is John. And he was baptizing. So if you don't know him, you call him Baptist. If you don't know him, you call him John. But he said he was sent from God. You said, is it not Elizabeth that gave birth to you? Is it not John, uh, uh, Zachariah that is your father? No, he said there was a man sent from God. Is it not Mary that is your mother? Are you not made from, are you not that rock? Is it not Joseph that is your father? No. The power of the eyes overshadowed flesh and blood. That's the meaning. You are that flesh and blood that the power of the highest came upon you. The Holy Spirit that we are talking about is the power of the highest. The moment the Holy Spirit came to you, you became Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> say, ask your neighbor, who do men say I am? <laughs> Continue that scripture. You will see. Because it, is, it will help you to know this thing. Who do men say I am? Who do men say I'm not hearing you. Who do men say? <laughs> Who do men say? Do you know many of you, yeah, when you were young, or if you ever was with someone when you were young, then you don't know anything, or they were insulting you always that you are foolish. Do you know that whatsoever they were saying to you can affect you when you grow up? You can see a 50 years old man you will be crying, say nobody care for me. Um, are you hearing me? Yes, it came from his loneliness when he was a child. That's why you see somebody that was raped when he was a child. Sorry to use such word, but you find out that that pain is still there when they grow up. Some of you they called you different name when you were young. Some of you they they they, they insulted you, and you have become those insults. Mm, now you are seeing what I'm saying. You have, there's no difference between you and all those words they said to you. And sometimes you sit alone and you begin to remember those things. Because you and that thing have become one. So it matters who they say you are. Are you hearing me? Yes, are you following it? Yes, Number one, I told you again. You will not know. You will remain, if you remain in the rock states, there's the flesh and blood realm, Mary. There's the rock states, the mind. Mo Mary have to allow. That's why the angels came to take permission. They say, you will carry a baby. They can't just invade her. That's why nobody invade you to say, you must accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You know, your mind have to agree. When the word of God comes, just as Gabriel was preaching to Mary, 
He said, we want to use your womb. Do you agree? She said, but how can this be? They said, the power of the highest will overshadow you. Then she said, let it be so to your handmaid. So I permit you in my mind. They pass through. They, is it, look at the three steps. They have to look for flesh and blood. Mary, a lady. The marble. Now, she has to agree with her mind. Then, we have come to the glass rim. Somebody say the glass rim. Yes. Which is the spirit. So the power of the eyes will overshadow you. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Now, if you get to... Let me show you the glass inside of you. 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 12. Some of you don't know that there is a glass inside of you. He said, for we, for now, we see in a mirror. He's talking about your spirit. That thing you look at in your house, you say it's a mirror, you are using to do your face like this. Your spirit is the mirror. Do you know, just as you physically go to your mirror in your house, you look at yourself. And immediately, you know how you look. Isn't it? Yes. If there is pain, if there is, if your women, if you are doing your eyelash and it passes like this, you know because of your mirror. Nearly every one of us today look at the mirror before we came here. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. You looked at the mirror before you came. And that is why you didn't make mistake in your dress. You didn't make mistake on your face. Are you hearing me? Because you look at the mirror. Now, if there is a flesh mirror, there is the mirror of the spirit. Oh, okay, let, let me not rush you now. I said, the, the, if your bone break, there is a mirror called what? Eh? Estrel. You are following. If you don't, I want to hear you answering me so that it will not look as if I'm just saying something. Your flesh and blood need mirror physically in your house. Your bone need the mirror of S3 to correct it if it's broken. Your spirit has a mirror. Look at that. For now we see in a mirror dimly. That means everything we are seeing about God now might not be very clear. When Elijah, when Elijah was praying for rain, the only thing he saw was the his servant say after seven times the servant say I see a little hand of a man in the cloud. The prophet said that is the abundance of rain. He called it a little cloud, as small as it is, like the hand of man. So some signs you feel in your spirit. Sometimes you want to enter a car and you lose a, your peace, just as small as that. And you say, I'm no longer going. And all of a sudden you heard that a plane killed 250 people. It was that small, that mirror that saw a little sign of losing your peace. You are complete. Your flesh and blood is complete to travel the journey. Your bone is all right. Flesh and blood have money to pay, even for first class. But now, when the mirror came, what you can see with flesh and blood, what no driver can see, that mirror inside you, for now we see in a mirror dimly that small piece you lost. Somebody wants to marry you, you have agreed for many years. You have been in courtship for many years. But as soon as the day of marriage came, you just lost your peace. For no reason. You try to force your body into the relationship. Something is just not connecting to it. The mirror has started picking up something that you can't see physically. He said, for now, we see dimly. It will be so dim. But it is real. Many people have died. Many Christians have died because of that small, that mirror that they are seeing dimly that they never believed. Because in their physical eyes, in the flesh and blood, everything looks nice. 
the, the tire is okay. The driver knows what he's doing. Everything is fine. I pay my first class. Let me just travel. And you call the person you are going to meet. They say, everything is fine. Just come. But the mirror saw something. And he said, the road is not clear. Go home. And rebellion. <laughs> I told, are, are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, sir. Jesus said, when you accept what he's saying, that stone will become precious. But when you don't accept it, it will become a stumbling block. How many of us have ever been in a situation where you wanted to do something and something was telling you don't do it? Something was telling you don't go. Very small impression. That is the meaning of for now we see dimly. That mirror is inside you. Christ is inside you. Are you hearing me somebody? Yes, Believe me. I don't want to marry again. It might be very painful to your emotion, to your mind. It's after you know that that man has a wife somewhere. Or the woman has a husband somewhere. But you, you could, your physical, your, your, your physical mind could not phantom. Why? Why should I not marry you? Why? Why should I not travel? I already pay for the flight. Why should I not travel? <laughs> because flesh and blood cannot reveal that to you. In the book of James 1 from verse 23, for if anyone is a hearer, do you see that? A hearer of the word and not a doer is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. If any of you hear his word in your heart, and you didn't obey or you read it does not stay you are like a man looking at your natural face in a mirror okay look at this mirror again in 2 Corinthians 3 from verse 18 this mirror this mirror this was the mirror that Michelangelo had to see David inside the rock. <laughs> if that mirror is blind, if that mirror is not seeing anything, you'll be living like a mere man. But we all, do you see that? Somebody say, We all. We all. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, We all. We all. Yes. He said, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord, as we are beholding Him. You behold God in your heart. That is that mirror I'm talking about. That is the mirror God will put His impression. That is the mirror where God stay. Now, it's either that mirror is covered. Many of you, you have received Christ, but you know, we know we have received Christ. But if I say you are Christ, you say, no, I am not him. It's not me. We are different. Your mirror is covered. That's just the difference. See what Paul called that mirror in the book of Ephesians 1 from verse 15. He says, since the day I heard of your faith, since the day I had, you have given your life to Christ. And your love for the saints. Mm -hmm. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Father, the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. That is that glass. Is the spirit of enlightenment. Is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of revelation. In the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding, that is the mirror we are talking about, being enlightened. How many of us are enlightened here? You know. <laughs> that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Although you are called, but you have not yet known what is the hope of his calling for you. And what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the sense? 
and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power i pray for you may that your glass be clear Amen. that is the meaning of the spirit of enlightenment the spirit of understanding the spirit of wisdom wisdom are in rents wisdom are in sections that is why you will find a a a, a, a pre-nursery teacher is still a teacher you find a primary school teacher is still a teacher you find a secondary school teacher is still a teacher you have a qualification you have a second a, a, a university lecturer is still a teacher you have a professor is still a teacher they are in levels wisdom are in levels revelations are in levels are you hearing me somebody the wisdom you are still operating in Christ tells you that you and Christ are different. You and God are different. But there is a wisdom that you will get from the Almighty that will make you tell you that both of you are one. You are one. I'm one with you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Now, this is the painful thing about this revelation. In the book of Revelation 4, from verse 2, Immediately I was in the spirit. I was in where? Was I in flesh and blood? Good. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And the one who sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper, saddle stone. That he was seeing God. This is God. This is not Jesus. This is not angel. He was seeing God literally. Uh huh. Next verse. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting. All these things are inside you. Clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold in their head. And from the throne proceed lightning, thunder, voice, and uh -huh. next verse. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass. Those that don't have understand, they have picked up it already. Before the throne... This throne is inside you. God is sitting in this throne inside your heart. And that glass is the spirit of revelation. The sea of glass you are seeing there is the spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding is the sea of glass. What does glass do? It reflects. Are you hearing me, somebody? Have you ever read your Bible where... Uh, he said, you are the apple of his eyes. Huh? Yes, okay, you are just ready. Come, sir, come. Let me show you something. Look inside the apple of my eyes. What do you see? Reflection, huh? Reflection of my God, say it again. Reflection of my You are wise. If God says you are the apple of his eyes, it means if he's looking inside your eyes, he's seeing himself. When you look at the apple of somebody's eyes, you see yourself. Ah, ah. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. God, look at you. And he's seeing himself inside you. Meanwhile, you are seeing yourself. You are seeing yourself as an ordinary marble clay. Who are you? Who do men say you are? I am a doctor. I am a Maureen. I am Je Jacinta. I am Pius. I will boldly tell you, I am the Christ. Say, you are the apple of my eyes. Whosoever touches you, touches me. That's what he said. Stop seeing yourself as a monkey. You know, when, <laughs> when they wanted to attack this creature called man, the first thing Charles Darwin did was to say, you came out from ape. 
He's trying to dissolve you to the least. You came out of ape. So now many people are behaving like ape. Yeah! Yeah! Hey! Hey! Are you hearing me? You are not an ape. You are not flesh and blood. You are Jesus. You are the Christ. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you. I like, thank God for, for bringing you out. Maybe if it's somebody else, I bring knife. You look at my eyes, see? I see black, uh, black and white. It was the Holy Spirit that selected you, it's not me. I see black and white, sir. I see eyelashes. That, <laughs> because that's who you see yourself to be. All right. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass. It is the heart of man, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and around the throne, we have four living creatures full of eyes. This is the spiritual eyes, in the front and in the back. The meaning of the front and back eyes is the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of wisdom. The eyes in the front is the spirit of wisdom that can see what wants to happen. That's why the, the, there's a gift called uh, the gift of uh, words of knowledge. It's the eyes from the back. It can tell you things of the past. That was what Moses saw, God's back. And he could write Genesis, right when, he, when God created everything, created Adam, he was seeing the eyes from the back. The gift of words of knowledge. The gift of the words of wisdom see the future. What John was seeing in the book of Revelation was the future. It's called the gift of wisdom. Are you hearing me? Yes, Don't remain a kindergarten. Don't say, what? I, I know you are. Listen, the more you know yourself, you see some problem you are carrying up and down, moving from one church to another, praying and fasting and one fasting to another, it will not go. Some of them will never go until you ascend. I'm telling you, they will never leave you. Even if they mistakenly take it small. You know the way a magnet cannot stop attracting nail or metals. That is how even if a man of God come and force it out of you, as far as you still remain the magnet, as you are going, you attract nail again. It's either you come out of being a magnet, it's either you come out of being a baby and flesh and blood, or else you'll be attracting problems that flesh and blood attract. Are you hearing me, somebody? All right. Coming to the conclusion of what I'm trying to show you. Who do men say I am? It's a question to you now. Who do people say you are? Some call you a, 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 a poor woman, a poor man. They call you the name of different things. Do you know what awareness does? Let me show you something. First Corinthians 3 from verse 3. See what Paul said. He said, for you are still carnal. For, you were, for where there are envy, strife, division among you, are you not carnal behaving like mere men? Hmm. So there are two kinds of men. There are some men that are mere men. And there are some men that are God. Open your eyes and see. Yeah, now some people, you are, many people are still in mere men. And you will attract the problem of mere men. You will do the sins of mere men. What drag mere men down will drag you down. That man that is paying somebody to go to his village to go and destroy idol. Many of you have done it here and you and when the idol hear it, it became angry. You, that place that are going in your village is not where the idol is. The idol is in your heart. The idol is in your flesh and blood. Your blood that your forefathers gave you is what the idol is tracing. Yes. Everything, every problem you are seeing, all the challenges you are seeing that you say, oh, my father people, my village people, your village people is inside your blood. And until you break past flesh and blood, you become higher than them. I'm telling you, you are, you are in America. You just, listen, listen, listen. 
You got a revelation in America. Revelation, I didn't say certificate. It's revelation that break you out of it, not certificate. They can still follow you when there's certificate. You see, when you go to a doctor, he trains you, you say, okay, you have a BP. He asks you, did your father have it? You say, yeah. Did your grandfather have it? Yes. Yeah. Do you have cancer? Did this person have it? Yes. He's tracing your blood. I do trace your blood. Everything that have life survived through blood. Even demons, they follow blood. Your ancestors' blood. If you want to know now, some of you now, you don't know. You, your nose, if you look at your father, your father don't have it. Your mother don't have it. It's like your, it's your grandfather's nose you have. I'm telling you, some of you don't know that. The way your lip look now, it's your grand, 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 grandmother. Have you not seen so that they give birth to a child and you don't know what, what the child look? If the child starts growing itself, it doesn't look like father. It, doesn't, it look like a, for a grandfather, a forefather. Because the gene is not dead. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So if you want to break out of all these powers, you must break past flesh and blood. Location does not matter. The day the revelation comes, the day you become enlightened, you say, where is that devil? Where is that spiritual wife that is looking for me? I'm looking for you now. Then you... <laughs> <laughs> then you will know that there are some people the devil run away from. He does not. Are you? He will run away from them. He will run away. From now henceforth, he will run away from you. Yeah. Where were we reading now? Where were we? Okay. He said, "Are you not mere men? Look at the book of. Uh, look at another person that knew himself in the Old Testament." Very, very strange. Samson, Judges 16, from verse. Do you know all the days of the Samson? Delilah was asking him, Tell me where your strength lies. Many Christians don't know where their strength lies. Believe me, every one of you, there is somewhere your strength lies. And if you don't know it, you'll be a prey to your enemy. How can Samson knows where his strength lies? You, you don't know where your own lies. If I ask you now, where does your strength lies? He said, my strength lies in the name of the Lord. You are quoting what you don't know. Tell me the secret of your strength. Tell me the formation. That's the meaning. Tell me what you were formed with. Because you are as strong as what you are formed with. If you are a rock, if you are formed from rock, you will be strong like rock. If you are like your father, you will be as weak as your father in your village. If you say, I am God, you will be as strong as what you are formed from. Are you seeing that? In Judges 16 from verse 11, Samson knew. He said to her, if they bind me securely, with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So Samson knew he was not like any other man. Okay, you are, you are quiet now. The same Samson you are laughing at, <laughs> Samson the lie, lie. is better than you as far as you don't know what you are doing. It's far better than you. He knew that he was not like any other man. He knew his strength was not like any other man. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, sir. Say, I am not like any other man. I'm not like any other yes. <laughs> Verse 11. After I deceived the girl, she came again. So he said to her the second time, he said, if they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like other man. Yay. Yay. The devil is asking you, what do you know that you make you think you are not another? You say, devil, I'm just a flesh and blood. Now stop tormenting me. I'm tired. He will continue. He likes you when you talk like that. 
you'll be so proud of you. Say, hey, you are right. You know, any day you say, I am the son of God. He will come and ask you, do you ask Jesus in the mountain? If you are the son of God. Do you know what the meaning of that if? He will remind you that you know you have not paid your light be if. And you now say, oh. He said, do you know that you said somebody is mad yesterday? You say you are the son of God. He said, oh. He begin to remind you there's, there's many if around your life. But if you can overlook that if and tell him I am complete in him, not me. Are you hearing me? Colossians 2.10 I am complete in him, not me. You are perfect. I, I, he said, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. Whatsoever is using to ac ac accuse you, lie to you, attack your mind, if you are, you say, I'm complete in him. I am looking unto him. I am becoming him. He's forming in me. If you don't know all these things now, you will never live above sin. You will continue sinking in the pit of sin. Because if you look at the children of Abraham, there were two things that he said we were hewn from. Look at Isaiah 51 from verse 1. He said, number one, you were hewn from a pit. And two, you were hewn from a rock. Then number three, you were hewn by the Spirit of God. Three. So if you remain in the flesh, you will always be in that pit. Are you hearing me? If you keep on living in flesh and blood, you will be afflicted. The pit of sickness, the pit of pain, the pit of backwardness, the pit of regret, the pit of pain of the past, the pit of bitterness, you will remain there. But the moment you begin to understand, I can't remain in the pit, you become a rock. Nothing will change you again. Rock means your conviction. Your conviction is so strong that even if there's wind, even if there's storm, you said, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abide forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so is the Lord around his people. From this time forth and forevermore. Let there be storm. Let there be earthquake. The rock still remains. Are you hearing me, somebody? All right. Are you following? Yes, sir. Is Christ forming in you today? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. You don't need to go to your village. You don't need to travel. Just here that you are. There's a revelation you will know. Even the demon fighting you will know you have known. He will know you have known that you have known. Do you know? Hallelujah. Amen. Let me show you what the spirit of revelation does. What it does. The spirit of revelation is a furnace of fire. The more you are going higher with revelation, wisdom, and enlightenment, you are eating the fire. Like Nebuchadnezzar told the people, he said, hit the fire seven more times. Look at what happened. Now, he told his mighty men that were fighting you. There's strong men fighting you now. Listen. Bind him. Bind them. Bind three of them and throw them into the fire. Now, when they were taking these men into the fire, these soldiers that they were taking these men, the fire first burned them. And when the men enter the furnace, nothing happened to them. Meaning, the furnace of revelation, the moment you begin to know, the moment you begin to understand, you are going into the furnace. And the same army that is holding you, forcing you, attacking you, immediately you come close to the furnace, the fire will first burn them. Poverty is those people who I'm talking about. Those ones that bind you. Fear. Lack. Untimely death. All of them, the moment you enter revelation, they burn. They burn off. It's automatic. Believe me. There's something you will know. Okay, let me... <laughs> let's round up. Uh, I'm rounding up with Peter again. Who do men say you are? It will help you today. Um, where did he say it? Matthew, you are looking at me. 16. 
go back there again. Start it from from 13, I think. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, do you believe that Jesus is inside you? Yes, Have you read your Bible where say, Christ in me, the hope of glory? Yes, sir. Christ in where? In me. Say it like Christ in where? In me. Is he in heaven? No. Is he where? In me. So who is Christ? Now, Jesus is asking you, you that is his disciple, who do men say that I, the son of man, can you bring that scripture? Who do men say that I, the son of man, I am inside of you? Next verse. Some of us here now said, John the Baptist, you started calling your name. Some said Elijah. Others said Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he said, but who do you say you? You. They might call you different name. Who are you? Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered. Do you know what is the meaning of Simon Peter? Rock. Stone. Yes. You are moving from flesh and blood to stone realm. Now I want to go into the spiritual realm. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ. The son of the living God. Is, uh, is, I'm, 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 I'm like Simon Peter now telling you, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Look at his next answer to Peter. He said, Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So nobody operating in flesh and blood can tell you that you are Jesus. Even your flesh and blood cannot even accept what I'm saying. Because it is revealed by the father. To he said, I should tell you. He said, upon this rock, he said, and I also say to you, you are Peter, the stone, I'm beginning to sculpture you. I want to form myself out of you. Upon this stone of conviction, I will build my church. The gate of aid shall not prevail against you again. You are not hearing me. The gate of hell means all the weapon, all the arsenals of hell can never come near you again. Yeah. When you are not operating in this dimension, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven, upon this rock, I have formed you out of the rest. I, I formed you out of the rest. You are now supernatural. You are now me. I am now you. I will build my church. Who is the church? Jesus is the church. He's the head of the church. And he said, for this understanding you have, next verse, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Not all of us that are Christian have the keys. <laughs> and whatsoever you lose here on earth, Whatsoever you bind on it will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose here on it. Why is it that you have been losing and nothing has been happening? Why is it that you have been binding and nothing has been happening? Because you have not come to the revelation of thou art the Christ. I am the Christ. You have not come to that revelation yet. Once you come to that revelation, whatsoever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Are you seeing that? You are the one stopping yourself ever since. Peter, for this you have known. The key has been given to you. Keys, keys, keys. Because the truth is that there are many doors that the devil is locking. You need these keys to open it. The keys of the authority that have been given to you. Are you hearing me somebody? Yes. So who do men say you are? Then who do you say you are? It's, a, it's two questions for you to answer. If men like, let them say anything they want. It's them. But make sure you don't call yourself what you are not. You are the Christ. I'm speaking from Revelation. Because Peter spoke from Revelation. He said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. 
And he said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my father who is in heaven. Now I have formed you now like that marble. You never knew who you were before. But now I have sculptured you. I have sculptured that David out of you. It has been inside of you. Jesus has been inside of you. Jesus is you. And you are Jesus. Like I said, every day I will always tell you. In that day, you will know what John 14 from verse 20 means. That I am in my father. And my father is in me. And I, I said, and at that day, you will know that I am in my father. And you are in me. And I in you. A sculptor like me that have been given the spirit of revelation, I'm showing you who you are now. That you are the Christ. Go home every day. Don't be playing around. This is not the time to play. I'm telling you, this is time for commitment to this knowledge. You don't know anything. I don't know anything. We should go back again. This is a revelation for our generation. Believe me, if we don't know this, a generation that don't know Jesus will arise. Because the Bible said, when, when Jacob took all his children to Egypt, the Bible said, a generation that did not know Joseph came. And those were the generation that was given a tax master. Your children are coming. They don't want to hear the God of Moses, the God of Babalola, the God of Katrikuma. They want to hear about your God. And the only way they will see your God is when you have sculptured yourself to look like the Christ, to perform miracles, signs, wonders, like the Christ. Go home, go and pray. Stop playing around. You have been living in this darkness for how long? We have been living in darkness. Let us come to this truth. Let us, let Christ be forming us. Let us perform miracles. Let us drop that load that always ensnares us. It is time. Are you hearing me, somebody? May the Lord give us understanding. May the Lord give you wisdom. In the name of Jesus.